and uh, Tower case. The number is D15519168. Welcome. Uh, for the video record, please confirm appearance. Yeah, Michael, I'm Butter, Mr. 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 present. Good morning, Judge Michael Bellowin, bar number 4436, on behalf of the defendant, Daniel Tyra, who is present. The court read the papers um, that were filed in this case on August 6th. I just want to confirm, Mr. Balaban, that you got a document that uh, was talk, uh, described as reply affidavit for Mr. I've read it, Your Honor. Yes, I read, read that online this morning. Oh, me too. Uh, we had a complaint for custody August 6, 2015, concerning a child of seven years old. We had motions filed by both parties to resolve parent-child issues. We had an answer account of plan on September 4th. There are some facts that I have uh, a need to get confirmed. Uh, does dad live in California? Yes, sir. Uh, is there a California child support order that he uh, pays child support every month in the yes, amount sir. of 300 and some dollars per month? Yes, Your Honor. And the actual uh, payments for, I think, uh, start from 2014, part of it to present is in there. So. California was the originating court based on a UFC case that your client opened here in Nevada that was transferred down there? Yes. Okay. Parentage is not an issue. Jurisdiction doesn't appear to be an issue and that Nevada is the home state of the child. It also doesn't appear that there's any question that mom has had physical custody of the child for the last seven years, right? Correct. Okay. Uh, 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 we deny that, Your Honor. We, we don't deny that the child has been in her possession except when the child was taken by CPS. That's, uh, that's fine. There right. isn't any factual argument you can make to the court that would establish the fact that the child's been in California with him for the last three or four years, right? No, Your Honor. Yeah, okay. Speaking, then, 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 look, you filed the motion. I'll let you argue your facts however yes, you want. Sir. You did mention that the child was removed and then returned to mom regarding neglect matter, but that never resulted in your client getting physical custody. And I'll explain why it does. It Thank doesn't you. matter. All I'm trying to do is establish with the nose oh. on my face, which is that the child has been with mom, right? Th that's correct. Thank you. Physically, yes. Make your arguments, please. Thank you. And I wouldn't deny that. I don't make any bad faith arguments to the court, ever, any court. You know, procedurally, uh, we must object to their, uh, we, we served our motion on August 6th, cert, uh, sent it out August 7th, and we did an opposition last Friday, which is October 16th in the afternoon. Uh, we must go forward today, though, uh, so uh, in any event, it's late. I have to object uh, and ask to be stricken, but of course, I've read Castro, and I don't think the court can anymore. If your client's prejudiced, which your client isn't prejudiced, uh, the court would do something else besides strike it, because I have to decide matters on the merits. We're ready. Um, we're not going to make final orders concerning custody today, but we're going to start that process. Yes, Your um, Honor. And I'll yeah. move on. Um, no, no. The your Honor, their Exhibit C... <laughs> The only point I was trying to make is there's never been a contested hearing on custody. Their Exhibit C, which is a master's recommendation, which was approved, was by default, and it doesn't say anything about primary custody to her, so legally speaking, highly technically, that may affect the burden at some point. Um, moving on. Um, your, client's never had, you, your client's never had any specific rights. In other words, he filed this case in part to get at the very least, his legal and physical rights defined. Uh, partly, the, the main reason was uh, other things, but that's one of the reasons, yes. We would ask, in the, uh, of course we want the child to temporarily go with dad to California, and let me just quickly say why. In their opposition, my client did not find out that she had a long CPS record, which we asked the court to link to and ask that, uh, to, to view their CPS records in camera until this year, until I sent him down uh, before we filed the motion so we could get the facts straight. It's from 2008 to uh, this year. And uh, it's much more, she didn't even mention that. And just briefly hitting the highlights, we now have the records. A lot of them were heavily redacted, but he picked them up and we now have them in the records. And I'll just hit the highlights. Um, uh, starting with December uh, 2014, uh, CPS case number 1275077, report number 1641540, uh, Destin missed uh, school, 28 days of school, tardies 10 times, 3 hours late. They had an appointment with her. Uh, the school feels that Destin's medical issues and mom's apathy, refusal to requ require Destin to attend school, are contributing to his absences. Now, this is in December 
3rd, 2014. The complaint was failure to go to school, educational neglect. So this makes a joke out of their Exhibit G IEP report of 2011-2012, which does say recommend continuing going to school in addition to special things. He was always required to attend school. The second fact that should concern the court, and now concerns the court, is if we hadn't filed our motion, she wouldn't have enrolled him in school as per her opposition. When did she file her opposition? October 15th, last Thursday. When did she enroll him in school? October 16th. So it makes no difference educationally. October 16th, which means he missed this year, and he missed the first, what do they call it, semesters of 2015. And he missed a lot of time in 2014. This kid hasn't been enrolled in school. And what you don't see in their opposition uh, is this, the child's school records. You don't see that because he hasn't been going to school. He was supposed to be. So anyway, CPS comes out December 3rd, 2014. Report number 1627265, case number 1275077, July 2nd, 2014. Drug abuse, neglectful treatment, complaint. Children, the child called her mother, her mother, to say, come feed me because I can't wake mommy up. Her mother called CPS, and of course CPS came out to say, what's going on? She gave them a story about back problems and uh, uh, stuff like that. And uh, Okay, moving on. January 4th, 2013, case number 1275077, which I guess is her case number, report number 1579397, concern physical abuse in public, complaint. Source, witness, says defendant hit the child in the head with an open hand, screaming and yelling at him. Notes, mom says she, she blamed it on the Lord's cat, basically. Uh, January 10, 2013, concern, hitting the child in public. This is a different, a different time. Admits hitting him, quote, but on the arm. Mom referred to behavioral psychologist, and we don't have the records for that, CPS does. 2515, this year, this year, does the court remember her opposition saying, well, you know, uh, basically she blamed the school. I have her site. Uh, page and site, she blames the school. Uh, she doesn't agree with the school, CCSD, and that's why the child hasn't been in school. But she, in a left-handed way, admitted. She's admitted that. Okay, 2515, CPS comes out. Mom, mom abusing, selling drugs at home, abusing meth, pot, prescription pills, and booze. Oh, by the way, Your Honor, we would ask for a, a drug referral today. She's had plenty of time to clean up with both urine and, and genetic testing. Mom's behavior associated with drugs, source observed drug transaction at mom's home, and this is not my client. Mom smoked spot with teenage daughter and was recently incarcerated for drugs. Uh, I'm not sure if that was the teenage daughter incarcerated with mom from the court, honestly. Uh, grandmother, another one, grandmother was called by the child to feed her. Now this is twice. We have the child calling in December of 14, we have the child calling in February 5th of 2015. This is another report by the grandmother. This is not my client. Okay, court hearing 12-9 in juvenile court. 12-9 um, of what year? It was a word show. What's that? 12-9 of what year? Uh, uh, 12 December of 2009. Oh, 09. Okay. Yeah, 09. Sorry. Um, anyway, uh, also, a presumption under 125.480, and I forget the subsection arises, because in 2008, she says, well, all this happened before he was born. Well, that's not true. Uh, four months after he, uh, the child was born, she was assessed on December 1st, 2008, for physical injury of Dustin. Uh, this was a court proceeding with a court case number. Yeah, and what was the result of the court proceeding? A court substantiated. Yes, and then what did they do? They returned the child to the mother, correct? I think eventually. They yeah, of course they did. They, they when was the last time your client had any contact with this child? Uh, your Honor, he saw he saw Dustin uh, 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 in July fourth, twenty fifteen. He's okay. seen him several times. What was times. the duration of that visit? Uh, a full weekend. Uh, okay. I visited and four four weekends in a row between June and July. Okay. I've seen my son within 10 times alone just this year. Good. I, then what What was the, did you um, take the child with you for that visit, or did you come to Nevada to visit? I've never taken him over state lines. So. Okay. And uh, the, so between June and July, you had a pattern of visits, is that right? Correct. Okay. I also want you to be specific in just dealing with uh, the timeline of events 
as far as his leaving California and where he's been. Obviously, everything that you mentioned, claims of educational neglect, physical abuse or neglect, um, all of those are relevant to the issue of custody. They're going to be weighed and balanced with the allegations they've made against him concerning his imprisonment and criminal history, et cetera. Yeah. This isn't the time and the place except to just identify that there's going to be uh, uh, fodder for discovery and, and uh, there'll be a trial on the issue. What specifically, I mean, there's no way that the court is going to order a removal of the child today without any evidence that's been presented. Uh, your client lives in California, so he's making two requests. He's asking to be awarded primary custody and he's asking to remove the child, which I'm sure you've counseled him isn't likely to happen summarily without any evidence being presented, okay? Uh, so so I'm asking what you're asking me uh, to, to uh, consider ordering today. Yes, Your Honor. Oh, and, and the court is an expert on the law and knows the new joint physical custody statute. But, uh, Which can't be accomplished with people living in separate states, by the way, with a school-aged child. So well, the legislature thinks they're really smart in amending and making presumptions, but those presumptions are rebuttable and refer to the logistics of placement, which require the court to with a school-aged child designate somebody who's responsible for the child during the school time. Okay? Yes, Your Honor. What he can do is he can come down two weekends a month from Friday at 7 to Sunday at 5. Uh, what, is the, what is the setup he has with him? Where does he live in California? Uh, okay. He has a job and a place, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Does he have any other kids? No, sir. And uh, the, I, I'm not suggesting that he wouldn't have an expectation that he could have visitation where he is. But uh, the, uh, what part of California does he live in? Huntington Beach. So it's uh, basically Southern California, about a four-hour drive from here then? Yes, sir. Um, has he ever taken the child to California? No, sir. He, he, she wouldn't let him. Uh, I, I get it, but I'm just asking, did yes. he ever do it? So he hasn't done that, so that's something he wants to do for sure. Absolutely. And the, uh, the, has he ever uh, celebrated any of kind of traditional holidays with the child, like Thanksgiving? Yes, sir. In fact, on July 4th, he came down because what was going on was... Uh, there was a birthday party by Mr. Wynn's son, Mr. Wynn's son, who's an eyewitness, by the way. His affidavit is in evidence. And Dustin went to a birthday party. Dad was there, uh, and uh, his relatives uh, were there. But that's where Mr. Wynn comes in. She says, oh, no, I don't use drugs. Well, Mr. Wynn, who's a neutral witness, has put her in an affidavit, which I'm sure the court has read, personally observing Tyra. Has he, is he able to take time off? Um, from work? Oh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, yes, he is. Uh, Friday, that's why we say Well, Friday, for instance, so. we have a special circumstance in Nevada in which essentially the children are off five days starting next week. Uh, Friday is a state holiday. Monday and Tuesday are staff development days. So if the child attends Clark County School District uh, schools, there's no school from Thursday to Wednesday next week. Oh, great. Um, the, um, I have... Um, what is the, I, the mediation referral can include a reference that he can participate by phone because he lives in California. Uh, you've already told him, I'm sure, that mediation is a likely uh, order for today. Uh, parentage is not an issue. He's been determined to be the father in the WIFSA case. Uh, the, um, the court is, doesn't need to hear all of the detail of the custody pieces of this case because, Frankly, the offers of proof are more than sufficient for the court to understand that there has to be a judgment related to custody. Uh, I um, saw his financial disclosure form. The amount of child support he's paying is significantly less than what his statutory obligation would be, but California must have used some kind of math to come up with that number. Uh, the, um, uh, the judgments of convictions related to their various criminal issues can be obtained if they haven't already been obtained for the court's review. And, uh, you know, I, I need to talk to Mr. Balaban about the logistics of placement for her based on the allegations that you made. She reports no job that she receives Social Security disability, and I need to know what other kids she has and, and what her living situations are. So why don't you let me visit with Mr. Balaban. Mr. Balaban, you, your, your client's going to have to answer to these allegations that he's made against her. And the court has never made a custody order per se. It's always been a child support order or some other uh, non-custody proceeding. I'm not aware of a California case or a Nevada case that's dealt with these issues, right? That is correct, Your Honor. All right. So we, we have business to do in this case. You've talked to your client and told her that the court would likely refer to mediation, right? Yes, Your Honor. And she has raised questions saying that he left and lived in California, that in fact he served a prison sentence in California, and that... He has other character issues that she's identified, right? Correct, Your Honor. Uh, the, uh, um, the arc of the case would be 
to make a referral, come back in December, have a temporary order between now and then. Uh, if the parties reach an agreement, then we segue into a custody decree. If you don't reach an agreement, then we talk about are you ready to go to trial and have the trial, okay? So I don't need that much detail con uh, in addition to the papers that you filed, but what points would you like to emphasize with the court? Well, the most important point is, the, is what the uh, court has clearly uh, indicated is, is an issue in this case, is the fact that the child has resided primarily with mom for the entire, entirety of his life. Other than the dependency case that was opened in 2009, have there been any active juvenile cases I should know about? You mean with CPS? The, those look like they're informal interactions with CPS. I'm going to... Um, uh, the only, I'm, I'm going to order for the records to be produced so that they can be available so I have the unity notes. You can look at them. We can check them with what he has. Um, and, but, but I need to know whether there's a 432B case open now because I have to comply with any orders that are in it. No, you're right. Okay. Not, that, not that I'm aware of. The child has never, none of the, uh, other than the 08 um, complaint, which was sustained and the child was uh, placed with the third well, party. Well, she did her case plan and they returned the child. Sure. Yeah. Uh, other than that, none of the allegations have been substantiated with CPS. I don't know. I haven't seen those records, so it's hard for me to... Okay. Uh, one issue is, it says that her mother called in 2014. Her mother's been dead since 2002. So there's obviously some issues with regard to... Uh, it says grandmother. Jeannie, yeah. I think that's one. Oh, oh, it's Carol, his mother. Well, e either way, uh, we're going to issue a temporary order today. Uh, Dad's entitled to visitation unless there's some sort of risk consideration that really hasn't been uh, articulated. Uh, Mom's uh, theme of the case includes a statement saying, look, he didn't express much interest. He didn't sue me for the last seven years, and this is coming to a head now for whatever reason. Uh, that being said, he's entitled to meaningful contact. In fact, if he lived here in town, we'd be happy to work through uh, you know, how to share a child in some way. Um, does she have any specific objection to a temporary order that would afford him meaningful contact when the child's home in school? Well, her only objection has been uh, part of the, I think, cause of the problem here is um, dad's, I think, desire, I think maybe both parties are guilty of this, they, they form their own opinions as to what's in the best interest of the child and how to treat this child with disabilities. Uh, from my client's perspective, based on incidences that have occurred, and the last incident was the minor child's birthday where the minor child was behaving badly in the back of the, of the SUV that they were traveling in to the birthday party. He, according to her, he reached around and he forcefully grabbed his fingers. He's using corporal punishment in an excessive manner, according to her, that is not in the child's best interest based on his disabilities and emotional issues. So that's, that is her primary concern. And is, the also child the under, is the child under the care of a psychologist or a psychiatrist? The child has been no. seen, uh, uh, this Dr. Ryan. Who's uh, unqualified? Dr. Manukian. Well, and I, and I, Dr. Look, I, I just want to know, I mean, he's been diagnosed with ADHD. I want to know what the, what the plan of treatment is as far as whether it's uh, medication or whether it's uh, counseling. I mean, obviously there are some other issues. Yeah. If I, there's I, a, if I don't we, know that there's a plan, Your Honor. That's part of the reason for okay. the delay in the filing of the opposition. I was trying to find out what that plan was. Okay, but, but look, the, the, she's operated independent of him. Correct. Right? Because he hasn't been active in it. Yes. She needs to sort of embrace this concept of joint legal custody rights and start including him in this dialogue. And she really there does. isn't one way to meet this challenge. It's a big challenge for parents. And he has a say in it, and he has a right to participate in it, and he may be able to offer, uh, you know, uh, a good contribution to how we, we address these issues. It's a challenge. Yes. I read the IEP report and, and, you know, we have educational and behavioral issues that are going to be something that they uh, address for, you know, the rest of the minority of the child, okay? Correct. Uh, the, uh, but, but dad has been excluded, whether it's because of him or whether it's because of circumstances, and he needs to start becoming more involved in that, and she needs to embrace the need to uh, uh, give him real-time information and input, okay? Of course, Your Honor, sure. Uh, the, um, like for instance, the IEP for instance, certainly in the spring and maybe even more frequently than that, they're going to have a sit-down with the folks in the school district and with the parents and dad should be able to participate in those uh, meetings. Um, is the child in second grade? Yes, Your Honor. And uh, we'll um, if the child's enrolled in school, then that's one issue I don't have to deal with uh, right. right now. But 
Dad needs to be on the record as the other parent, especially after this okay. order is entered. Yes, uh, I, you can start engaging with the school and, and getting the information that's necessary. Your Honor, I will engage him in everything. Um, there's an, uh, we're going to redo another IEP in uh, two weeks for Dustin. Does he take medication? Yes, he does. He is it uh, administered in the morning? Yes. Do you do it in, the, it in the afternoon or evening at all, a smaller dose? At night for him to sleep. Uh, do you do it every day? Every day. Does Dad know about it? Does he have the he medication? He knows everything, yes. Okay. Um, you need to be consistent with that, too. That's and, what we recommend. Oh, yes. Um, he has wanted me to just cut him off of all medications, and that's been a problem. You can't just do that with him. It, it's I want to involve him, and I want his involvement because I want him to understand the level of my son's disabilities. Therefore, he can really be a big help with Dustin because he's his dad. And um, I want him to be involved with everything so he can understand what Dustin is going through and so he can better help me help him. Well, the, it's hard to have those discussions when he's basically saying that you're a neglectful mom and that he wants custody. Yeah. So I, I get that there are a couple layers here, but I've, I've heard enough to articulate orders for today that the court has authority because Nevada's the home state. Uh, even though dad lives in California, he can come here, he can make uh, his case for custody. Um, we are gonna have different types of hearings. Obviously, I love to have you here all the time, but if it's a 15-minute hearing like this, I can waive your appearance and you can appear by phone. But if we have a trial or an evidentiary proceeding, you've got to be here. Okay? The other thing is, is that Dad has an expectation that the court identify his legal and physical rights, which include an opportunity to have meaningful contact between he and the child. And thankfully, you had recent contact with the child, so you haven't been a stranger for six or seven years. And the court has a foundation to at least allow you regular pattern of visits, even though I understand, Mr. Root, that your case is, is for custody. Uh, the court cannot grant custody and removal without an evidentiary basis, and that's why I cannot grant your request to give you physical custody with permission to live with the child in California. That would be what the contested trial would be about. Mom has had physical custody. On a temporary basis, the parties will have joint legal custody, which is an expression of your rights as a parent that are fundamental. And mom will have temporary physical custody, which is consistent with what's actually occurred uh, during the past several years. Dad's visitation is a little bit of a challenge in that um, it is an eight-hour drive for him uh, to uh, get back and forth between here in California and the child at school age. Uh, the court is going to order that Dad be allowed opportunities to visit no less than two times per month. The third weekend of each month to find is the third Friday to the Sunday uh, can be exercised in Nevada. Um, you'll uh, plan to come here and visit with the child. The first weekend of the month, with special circumstances for next week, uh, you'll be able to take the child to California and pick up after school on Friday and return on the Sunday. Now next week is a special circumstance because Nevada was established on Halloween, we take the last Friday of the month off as a state holiday. Also because the Clark County School District organizes a sort of a uh, fall break they do staff development for their teachers on Mondays and Tuesdays. So next week, is uh, the timing is good for you to have a meaningful visit with the child, which means you would be able to pick up on Thursday next week and keep the child until Tuesday, which would give you basically Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Uh, we'll have exchanges at, um, uh, can you get here by, say, 4 o'clock? On Thursday. Thursday? What time is reasonable? Do you want to pick up Friday morning I, I work, instead? I work Monday through Friday, 7 to 3.30. I do All right, have some then, then how, about, how about you come pick up early first thing Friday morning? Absolutely. Uh, the child's out of school. I don't want you on 9.15 after midnight, you know. Yeah. I, I, we, that's a lousy road to be on in the first place, but I'd like you to drive, you know, during the day hours. And, and uh, you can pick up the child at uh, 10 o'clock on Friday morning. You'll be back in Southern California by 2 or 3 in the afternoon. You'll be going against traffic, by the way. Uh, Tuesday, uh, have the child back by noon here. Now, the, the weekends, you may decide that the first weekend of the month, you don't want to drive all the way here, drive all the way back to Southern California. You can exercise the visits here, but I want you to establish a pattern of routine where you take the child to your home. You kind of, uh, you, you have an, at least a day, day and a half to have that type of interaction that's important for you to do it. I don't have any reason to think, Mr. Root, that your client won't follow the orders. I just have to mention that you're being judged on how you follow the court orders. She's being judged on making sure that she follows the orders and make sure you get the child. 
you're being judged on whether you can keep a schedule and be reliable. You know, I, I don't have any reason to think that you would abduct the child or violate the court orders in that regard. The child support order from California would continue. Obviously, it could be reviewed based on changes in circumstance. We're not going to do that today. Uh, the court is going to make a referral to mediation, which will have a return on December 16th. You can tell that I'm looking at this in a very small bite, end of October, November, and early December for the visits. You guys can do a much better job than I just did in talking about holidays and vacations and a timeshare concerning the kids or the child. And I put on here that plaintiff resides in California, so Mr. Root, if your client needs to participate by phone, I'm okay with that. Yes, sir. Uh, the other thing I need to do, because uh, uh, Division of Family Services has interacted concerning this child, is I need to get a copy of the records, uh, the, what we call the Child Protective Services records. I'm going, I know that you probably have some, Mr. Root, but uh, this way the court can retain a copy of the unity notes uh, concerning this interaction. Mr. Valdivon, you get a chance to review them. Uh, they may or may not be material or relevant uh, to the case. Uh, they'll support uh, claims and defenses in the case. But I do need to, uh, I need to, I need to do a set assessment of risk, even though obviously with my temporary order, I don't find any risk of keeping the placement with mom temporarily. Uh, the um, changing of the child's name. Uh, it is the burden of the person seeking to change the name to show that it's in the best interest. This is something that is usually uh, addressed when the child is born. I assume mom named the child. Uh, but um, it is not, it, 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 there's a, the court is either going to find that there's insufficient proof to do it and not change the name or I'm going to find that it's in the best interest of the child for the child to identify with both parents. So it's not likely I would change the name and exclude a reference to mom, right. especially if mom has other kids and they have the same name. Uh, or uh, some parents agree to change the name to include both names or hyphenate the names. Yeah. This is something I want you to chew on and decide at a future date. I'm explaining that it was one of the things on your plate for consideration. It's not decided today. And those are the possible outcomes, OK? Uh, so it's something you can talk about in mediation. Certainly your lawyers can, can talk about that. Dad's request to remove the child at this time is denied without prejudice. Mom's request for, or in the form of a counter motion for uh, temporary uh, physical custody is granted subject to dad's visits. Now, mom, you're the primary custodian. You've been in that position for a long time. You've probably handled all the dentists and the doctors and the uh, school stuff. And you may or not, may not, when you filled out all the paperwork, included his contact information. You need to clean all that up. Yes. Uh, Mr. Root is going to prepare an order which is going to confer, finally, legal and physical rights to Dad. Go to the folks that are providers and say, I want to make sure you have Dad's contact information. This is his name. This is his number. This is his address. And then give Dad uh, the folks that interact with your son. Absolutely, Your Honor. I will do now, that you don't have to hold his hand and do everything. Once he has that information, then he can contact them and say, look, I'm the dad. I want to learn more about this or that, okay? Uh, the, um, and, and then you would be complying with this adjustment to a joint legal custody concept, okay? Before, there was really no order, and he hadn't obtained an order. And so I'm not going to criticize what you've done in the past, but you need to fix it, okay? Uh, Mr. Root, conceptually what I've established is the first weekend of the month, he can have visits in California. The second week, the third weekend, which is his second opportunity to visit, would be here. So we'd spend the weekend in Nevada. He needs to let no mom where he is. If she, she needs to know the address and contact information for emergencies. If he's staying at a hotel or with friends here in town, then uh, he, she needs to know what his cell number is and where the contact is for emergencies. Um, any other details that we need to have in the order? Uh, no, Your Honor. Uh, may I just say the reason why the child's name wasn't uh, put in his name or somehow hyphenated was because, and I'm surprised you didn't tell you this, before she alleged that dad was dad, she alleged two other men before that were the father. So what? It's just one of those things that were, well, in their opposition, they say that he just doesn't care about the child. Yeah, well, father. you know, it, it, that, that might be a, look, both of you have perspectives, your points of view. They're not invalid. That just happens to be how you see things. The fact of the matter is, is that this case is filed when this child is seven years old. You could say he's seven years late, okay? Or whenever his paternity was established in the child support order, he, he could have filed at any time once he knows conclusively he's the father. I'm not treating him that way. 
I'm saying this is the time to establish his rights and responsibilities. He has a right to make a request that the court consider changing the name to allow the child to have a name that identifies himself with both parents, including him. And I was just bringing it up because yes, I needed to explain to him that I wasn't forgetting that he made that request, and I wasn't going to deny it or grant it. I, I wanted him to understand what the considerations were. That's the only Absolutely. reason why I brought it up. Absolutely. Listen, Thank it's you. not uncommon for unmarried folks to have relations with more than one person who could be the father of a child. And just because there might have been relations with more than one person around the time of conception is not something that the court would hold against either party, okay? So um, we've uh, explained the policy decisions, the temporary orders. Um, you're uh, going home today? Yeah, correct. I have a flight that leaves at 7. Do you have an opportunity to see the child before you go? Absolutely. Uh, what do you th what, what's your window, between now and 5? Yes, sir. Uh, is the child in school? Yes, Your Honor, he is. He could, sh he could be there at the school with me if he'd like it. Are you okay with that? Yeah. All right, Dad, Absolutely. you can pick up the child after school and drop off on your way to the airport. And that way you have a chance to get a visit out of this, okay? All right. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your Honor, just one more issue, if I could. What is it? The attorney fees. There's a huge disparity in income here. Yeah, you know, the uh, uh, you may attorney's defer. fees under 126 are discretionary. I, um, I mean, if this... If this, before you rule, if this goes to an evidentiary hearing, then... That would be the time to decide. When we come back from mediation, yes. if I'm setting an evidentiary hearing, I would consider whether or not the uh, uh, disparate financial circumstances warrant some sort of award of fees, but that's denied without prejudice at this time. Okay? All right. Thank you. Thank Have you. Have a safe trip home. Thank you. Your mediation hearings will be at Pinkos and Bonanza. Okay, you don't have to go there today. They will contact you.